frequently I would find myself uh, on trains like this, going to places like where we're going today, like going to Milton Keynes or going to other areas in the Midlands, just to sit down in somebody's front room and listen to what people had to say about their lives, what they thought was happening in their lives, what they thought was happening in their communities and what they thought was happening in the country. David Muir worked at the heart of Gordon Brown's government. As director of political strategy, he was responsible for keeping it in touch with public opinion. He's travelling to Milton Keynes to listen to a group of women who voted for Labour in the past but didn't back the party at the last general election. I think what's going to be interesting tonight is to see how people feel four months on after the election, how life is going, how Britain is going and how they think they're going to prosper or not prosper as a result. Cameron's there and he all the time is in the paper, yeah. is in the face, on the news. Where's Clegg? He's not as projected as Cameron. I think that when with the coalition first came in, they were standing together. You actually, they give a very good, uh, whether it's a show or whatever, yeah. they did come yeah, across yeah. very well Absolutely. together, didn't they? The way they interacted. Muir worked alongside Gordon Brown during the key moments of his premiership, during the financial crisis and the election campaign. We were hit by a financial cataclysm that started from America, which meant that seven, you know, that. that you know, tax revenues dried up as a result, and the idea that those top 1% should pay some more tax as a result, that didn't cost us the election for one minute. I mean, there were some very tough things that we had to do, which didn't help our popularity, and I would argue what we did in the top rate of tax was the least of those. It was actually quite a popular measure. Uh, Where are they flocking well, from? A million people come from Europe, but a million people, British people, have gone into Europe. You, knew, you do know there's a lot of British people staying in Europe as well. What did she say? Oh, everything. She's just a sort of bigoted woman. Uh, said she used to be late. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I don't know why. He had misheard her, um, and he, he thought that the phrase immigrants flocking here was immigrants something else here. And that he found the what he thought was the use of the F word, more surprising. Um, and, you know, he was wrong, he'd kind of, he, he'd kind of, he'd kind of miss out. I do think we should have been um, much more combative um, against the Conservative Party during the election. I mean, Gordon was criticised towards the end of being quite negative, but I think we could have done better if we'd had a more forensic case um, of which, and that, you know, that's my failure, um, nobody else sees. Muir thinks the next Labour leader needs to win back towns like Milton Keynes, where voters deserted the party at the last election. Well, to, to understand the, the Milton Keynes seat, is it has a disproportionate group of what's known as kind of happy families. They account for about 11% of the UK population, but in a seat like Milton Keynes South, they account for about 40% of voters. They tend to be young families starting out in life, um, uh, they live in a new built home, they live in new towns, obviously like kind of Milton Keynes. Um, they're highly dependent because of where they live on their car. Um, so when petrol prices grow up, go up, um, when food prices go up, they get really squeezed as a result. And this, this group, um, this group of kind of middle income um, voters, and when I say middle income, 20 to 40,000 pounds is their kind of family income. I'd like you first of all to, to grab, grab some pieces of paper, grab a pen. I want you to write three good things about David Cameron, the Prime Minister, and three bad things about it. I like the fact that it was a family man with family ethics. So, for example, if he's doing something with education, his children are going to school. Um, he was using the National Health Service, for obviously, when his wife had the baby recently. Mm. I think mm. he'd have been slated if he hadn't done. But I also like the fact that he prioritised that we all, that we all do it, our family come first. So when his dad was poorly, it was a priority for him to get there. And I think so that gives you a good picture that he has got that trustworthy, mature mm. family background. Um, he's a good, positive ambassador, really, for our country when dealing with other countries. He always looks smart and well, well presentable and really approachable. Has he exceeded your expectations? Um... Or has he come in slightly below than your expectations? I think when you read the newspapers though, you see that the economy is growing. 
and it's showing that we're gradually getting back on our feet. I know a lot of people say, oh, no, we're far from getting out of a recession, and, mm -hmm. but it, it is growing. And I have had personal experiences yeah. of friends, businesses that are yeah. starting to expand and they're getting back on their feet. And I think that is evidence in itself, isn't it? That yeah. mm -hmm. he, the changes he's made are getting us somewhere. Yeah. Wow. As I said, I, you know, gone through Margaret Thatcher in that recession, gone mm -hmm. through this one, and I just don't believe that it's going to be turned around that quickly. I right. think we'll go low again before we go high. You kind of woke up and kind of after the election you found it was going to be a hung parliament. Were you worried about that? Did you think that was a kind of good thing? I, th I think initially um, I suddenly thought, oh God, no one's going to make a decision except it. But I think <laughs> on balance, no, um, I think it's better because no one party can go off on doing what they're going to do. I think it's, it's made it much more, you know, much even in terms of, you know, what they're deciding to do. And I I'm, I'm actually think it's working very well. To lots of people making a decision rather than just one, which two heads together... I feel that sometimes is is better than just one person yeah. making mm. that decision hopefully, for. Yeah. If, well, yeah, hopefully yeah. that's how Hope, it's going to yeah. be. What would the Labour Party have to do to get your vote in the next election? It'd be so, nice to see some figures, really. If we come in, we are going to do this. Yeah. This is how much money is going to be saved. This is where we're going to put our money into. This is how much we're going to spend on X, Y, and Z. Um, the cuts have to be made, They're, this is where the cuts are going to be made, and, and being able to sort of see a physical, oh, the, the economy is going to grow. I think yeah. you've got to see that their new leader would be a leader. Mm. Right, yeah. okay. That he's going to take control and take charge and be able to make mm. decisions and things. Yeah. yeah. Got to you be know, a likeable yeah. character as well. It's, it's, it's got to be someone who's, yeah, yeah. who's not gonna, flaky. Mm. Yeah, who's going to, yeah. you know, you'll be confident in. The one thing that you kind of saw from that discussion is actually the scale of the challenge that Labour has got. The overall sense is that coalition's kind of working, it's working kind of fairly well. There's the innate kind of British sense of fairness that actually it's quite good having two parties kind of working together. You, you saw that kind of phrase in the group, which is two heads are better than one. So you're likely to get a much more fair, much more balanced approach. So, you know, it's very appealing. Coalition government is, you know, something that the British public are not frightened of and actually, you know, they quite like. So that show, that's one big challenge that the Labour Party's got, you know, got to show in some ways, you know, going forward is the failures of the coalition government. But you could see here, these are, these are people who are kind of pretty happy um, with thing with you know with things so far, and the other thing that kind of came through, which is warm words, platitude, will not work. And what a new leader leader has to do is very quickly hit the ground running, show that he's a strong leader, show that he has a plan, but make sure that it's not warm words and flannel. It's very clear that if they are to consider voting Labour again, they need hard specifics to kind of con consider.